Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Boardsy, and in this video we're going to be doing a review of the G-Wolves HSK. It is a 37 gram fingertip mouse. Um, it is not released yet. This is a pre-production sample. It was sent out to me by Vessel Gaming. Huge shout out to them for that. Um, and I'm very happy that this is a sample because I just get to talk about it as a mouse. I don't have to talk about things I don't care about, like the fucking value compared to other mice and all of that bullshit. I just get to talk about the mouse, and it's a pretty dope mouse, so I'm happy to be able to do that. Uh, first off, a lot of people are just very ignorant and immediately dismiss the mouse because it looks weird. And yes, it does look like half a mouse. You are not the first person to identify that. Um, but it's designed for fingertip, so people who play fingertip, this feels perfectly fine. That is me. I am an adamant fingertip grip user, and it, as you can see, it has room for all of my points of contact because I do not put my palm on the mouse. Um, yes, it is possible to put your palm on the mouse. Um, I'll try to palm grip it. As you can see, it doesn't really work as I have um, like man-sized hands. If you have child-sized hands, it's still not going to be very easy. However, I have seen a 13-year-old palm grip this. Uh, you can't really claw it. Uh, like, yes, you technically can. You can do a claw grip and move the mouse around. Um, but when the Hot ES is available and it actually feels comfortable, it isn't, like, physically irritating, um, there's just zero reason to get this over that. Now, getting into the uh, specifics of the shape, uh, there's really not much going on. As you can see, there's, like, no bottom of the mouse. I'll compare it to uh, the Hot ES. And you can see the Hot ES is a very small, very short mouse. And you can see the HSK is like half the size. Uh, they are nearly the same width. Um, I feel like the grip width on the HSK is a bit wider, at least down here where I'm gripping it. Uh, but really, that shape doesn't matter too much for fingertip grip. Uh, all you need is some points of contact, a sensor, and some clicks. And then, boom, that is a, a ideal fingertip grip mouse. Uh, it's very small, so the hump isn't going to get in the way. That's a problem with mice that have fucking huge humps. Uh, and yeah, for the niche, it is perfect uh, in terms of like compatibility and everything. No matter what your hand size is, you are going to be able to fingertip this mouse. And also, no matter what your fingertip style is. Um, if you flat fingertip, um, not many people... But this is a like genius shape for that. The uh, way that it's like angled up is like perfect for your fingers. It is so comfortable. This is like the palm grip of fingertip, um, but I can actually appreciate it. Now I'm actually going to put in some gameplay I got while I talk about the like specifics of the mouse because I just wanted to show people who were asking me to put some gameplay. I just wanted to show a few Kovacs runs I got with this mouse and they are mainly like small dot scenarios and that is where this mouse excels. Anything that is like actual just pointing and clicking, um, just flicking, it is very fucking easy with this mouse. But I'm not going to lie, I could not track for shit. Um, playing against anything that is like fast moving targets Targets. I was shaky. I was not accurate. I just really needed some extra stability. Um, and that is available on every other mouse that I've used. Um, it's just something about the mouse being so much smaller and even so much lighter um, that something just felt a bit off when I was swiping it around. Even after lowering my sense, um, I just still felt a bit more shaky. And immediately once I transferred over to the Hot ES, everything felt a lot more like natural and uh, flowed a bit easier. But that does not mean I did not enjoy my time on this mouse. I actually really fucking enjoyed it. It's in my top three for fingertip mice. Not top three overall, and I'm going to get into why. Um, but for fingertip mice, it is amazing. I haven't tried the M1K, and I definitely need to. Uh, but I still prefer the Hot ES over it, and uh, the Ultralight 2 and the Viper Mini. Uh, they definitely compete with it as well, but it is in the top tier of a um, mice for fingertip grip. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the clicks, and these should be better. Uh, they're not the highest quality. This is, of course, a pre-production sample, uh, so I'm not going to really hold it against the mouse. I'm not going to be like, don't buy this because the clicks are bad. Uh, but on mine, there is a, a good bit of like play 
pre-travel and a bit of post-travel, and uh, it's getting worse every day. The more I click the mouse, the worse the clicks get. They just, once again, they feel low quality, and there's no other way to describe it. But yeah, since this is a pre-production sample, I'm not really going to ho hold the uh, low quality clicks against them. But another thing to note is that um, like, if you try to click it down here or even like here, it just won't activate. You'll just basically be pressing the uh, click into the shell. And that's just like, th I don't know, it's going to get fixed because people are complaining about it. But as of now, that is an issue. Uh, but now I'll do a click sound test. Um, as of now, there's really nothing special going on. They're just standard Omron 20Ms. Uh, they aren't like the best tensioning I've ever felt. I feel like something cool that G-Wolves could do, maybe they could put like TTC Golds in the mouse, and then it comes with aftermarket switches, and it's a fingertip mouse. It adds to the enigmatic aura that this mouse has. Um, it would just be pretty fucking cool to put some better switches in the mouse. Uh, maybe I'm just biased because Omron 20Ms are thumbs down emoji uh it does not have side buttons side buttons would ruin this mouse first off it's fingertip why are you putting side buttons on a fingertip mouse if you need side buttons um just get another mouse i don't understand why people are acting like that's literally like holding them back from buying this mouse if you play fingertip you know that using side buttons isn't very easy and it's not like the most accessible um, thing ever and it would also introduce some side flex it would add a lot more weight like six grams minimum I could think of like a thousand reasons why side bones are a bad idea um, I'm happy they aren't there um, this is like an FPS mouse it makes it kind of aids for browsing uh, but once again obviously if you're buying this mouse you have another mouse that you can use to browse um, so yeah, no problems there for on my end. The cable, um, this is something I do have a problem with. The ca like, it's not bad. It's flexible and shit. Um, I talked about this in my initial impressions video. It is just when you're swiping the mouse around, it feels heavy. You can feel the drag, um, even in a bunch. Um, I'm gonna be getting this mouse paracorded, so I'll definitely be able to update then. But um, the cable feels heavier than the mouse when you're swiping it around, um, and that's just kind of very unepic. But you can learn to deal with it, but I feel like it just makes the mouse feel a bit heavier overall. Same thing happened on the Zigen NP01, if you guys remember. Uh, the feet there, four feet, like kind of final mouse style, like very similar to G-Skates almost. Um, and they're fine enough. They glide around pretty well. Um, no issues there. They're kind of what you expect from like PTFE stock feet. Um, you might want, since it is not micro USB, I know I forgot to mention that when talking about the cable, um, when you're replacing the mouse, you could, or when you're replacing the cable, you could also probably replace the feet with some core pads and you would benefit from that. Uh, but there are not going to be aftermarket feet on this mouse for fucking like months to come. Uh, who knows when this mouse is even going to get released? Like, please do not ask in the comments. I have no fucking idea. Uh, there is this weird report rate button on the bottom. It's, I don't know, it's just really obscure. You can click on it and it changes the uh, DPI. But if you click on it and click mouse one, it changes the polling rate. People are like, oh, how do you change the polling rate? That is how. Um, so, yeah, pretty fucking dope, I guess. Um, very functional. But once the software is released, everything will be a lot more seamless. And I presume you'll be able to change the debounce time as well. Uh, maybe I can make the clicks feel a bit more responsive. Um, and yeah, that's really going to be... Oh, I forgot to talk about the scroll wheel. It feels very similar to the XM1 scroll wheel with like a sort of rubberized texture. Um, not very close to anything Jules has done before though, but it's not that important. Um, it's functional, pretty tactile, um, gets the boardsy scroll wheel seal of approval. Um, but yeah, this mouse, honestly, uh, I'm a fan. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Um, if the clicks in the cable were better, I'd say it's a 9.5. The only thing keeping it from being my main is my inability to track with it. Um, some people won't experience this, but I just know that I play better when I have a bit of stability. Not saying I couldn't perform with this mouse, and I did get a ton of high scores on a small dot scenarios with it. Uh, so yeah, if you are a fucking point and clicker, insta gib player, fingertip grip user, this mouse is for you. Uh, so yeah, that's really going to be all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. 37 grams, kind of insane.